Hello, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is part four of the mystery of the fig tree, but this is kind of part two of Israel, the vineyard of God. And if you didn't listen to the previous part of this, this uh, if you have not listened to the study prior to this one, it won't. this study won't make as much sense. You'll get something out of it, I'm sure. I get something out of the Bible every time I look at it, listen to it, or read it. But Jesus said, and Isaiah, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, said that the Israel was the vineyard of God. So let's take a look at John chapter 15. In verse 1, Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father, God the Father, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Let's read that again. I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. When he says he purgeth it, it's talking about pruning. And I mentioned this in the previous study, but I'll say it again. When you take a branch of a tree, for example, and it quits producing fruit, well, they prune it, they cut it. And then instead of just having one branch that doesn't produce fruit, you'll get two branches that grow in its place that will produce fruit, young branches. And it says, you know, bringing forth fruit. So let's take a look at Matthew chapter 7 and verse 6. What is fruit? Jesus says, give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Do you know in the Old Testament, homosexuals were likened unto dogs? Don't believe me? In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23 and verse 18, it says, Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow. For even both of these are abomination unto thy God. I guess it's talking about, you know, they're bringing in a tithe because they want something. So what do they talk about here? Well, <laughs> let's go back to the next, the previous verse, Deuteronomy 23, verse 17. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, you know, a prostitute, there shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore. In other words, don't, you know, you get a prostitute and she's charging men to perform her services. You're going to take that kind of money? and put it into the Lord's house because she wants a blessing? Really? 
This is called parallelism, people. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow, for even both of these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Parallelism. It tells you the whore and the dog, the sodomite. So in Matthew 7, 6, it says, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. You know, swine have got sharp tusks, and they will bite you, they'll tear you, rend you. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh, receiveth, and he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Or what man is there of, of you whom, if his son ask bread, will you give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Wow! Remember all the, the, the Torah keepers and the Hebrew roots people? They say, oh, you got to keep the laws. What did Jesus say in Matthew 7, 12? Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. This is the golden rule. Do unto others as others do unto you. It's the same thing. That's the law and the prophets. But the Hebrew roots people would have you keeping the Sabbath and keeping the feast days and getting circumcised and washing pots and pans and all these little rituals. Jesus says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few you there be that find it. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing. Yeah, they wear business suits, coats and ties, and Italian leather shoes. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Hmm. Grapes are the symbol of Israel. Figs are the symbol of Judah, which are not the same people. Peop uh, they're not the same people, people. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire, the lake of fire, right? Therefore, by wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works. Oh yeah, we worked the soup kitchens and 
we passed out clothing for the homeless. And we did this right on national TV, and we gave checks to the American Cancer Society and the Red Cross and the United Way. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 7. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Let's go back to John chapter 15. Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch of me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purchaseth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now, there's people that will tell you that if you have fruit and you actually do good works, that you're earning your salvation. There are people that try to do this. However, personally, I think for somebody that's truly shaved, good fruit is proof that you're grafted into the tree. I mean, after all, what good's an apple tree that doesn't put out any apples? What good is it? It's not good at all. When an apple tree puts out apples, isn't that proof that it's an apple tree? Yeah. I mean, an apple tree is not going to put out oranges or bananas. Verse 3. Now you're clean through the word, and Jesus is the word. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. And Jesus is the vine, right? No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, Ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. That doesn't sound good, does it? If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, Ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy, that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. How's that for Torah keeping? Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Oh boy, people that believe in 
whosoever will, they hate this verse. They hate this verse. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. The disciples decide, oh, I think I'm going to go join Jesus and be his disciples. No. Jesus chose his disciples. Even Jesus uh, chose Judas Iscariot. He says, have I not chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? Oh, yeah. That was when they were, I forget what book it's in, but that was at the uh, the Last Supper. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. And what's his name? Well, being that the New Testament was written in Greek, and my Bible says Jesus, I think that's his name. You ever wonder why these Hebrew roots and Torah keepers, they want to make it Yeshua? Maybe they want it so that when you ask something of the Father in his name, you get no answer. I mean, let's face it. If you're from India and you're asking Shiva, the uh, god or goddess of destruction, you know, that's the that's the image or statue that they have in front of CERN. Or if you ask Brahma or Vishnu or Hare Krishna, yeah, Hare Krishna is a Hindu god, little god, devil, demon. When you ask in the name of Hare Krishna and you get nothing, don't be surprised. you got to ask the Father. Jesus said, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Well, my Bible says Jesus, not Yeshua. Maybe there's a reason why they don't want you to ask in the name of Jesus. Maybe the devil doesn't want you to ask in the name of Jesus. And when they tell you, oh, well, there's no J in Jesus when this was written, you know, there's no J in Jesus. Well, I guess Jews, capital J, E-W-S, Jews don't exist either. If there's no J in Jesus, there's no J in Jews. Jews don't exist either. Yeah, I don't have any respect for the Hebrew roots and Torah keepers. I really don't. Because they hate the name of Jesus. The ones, the ones that I've had, re, uh, it, well, the ones that I've corresponded with and listened to. Verse 17. These things I command you, that ye love one another. Jesus gives a commandment there. That ye love one another. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you, I have chosen you, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Ever wonder why Christians are so hated? Why the news media blast Christians? Right here, people. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, don't worry about it. You're going to be raptured in a pre-trib rapture and not go through any persecution. Oh, 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 wait. That's That was the, um, the fundamental, independent fundamental Baptist uh, version of the Bible. Let's read what the King James says. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. 
Let's see, what did they do to Jesus? Um, they crucified him and killed him. Huh. But the Baptist will tell you that the servant is greater than his Lord. You're not going to be persecuted. You're not going to have to suffer and die for your faith. But Jesus said the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will also keep yours. They will keep yours also. Why do they keep your sayings? To turn them against you. In a court of law. Don't they do that? But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. Hmm. You see, if they don't know Jesus, they don't know who sent him. When people tell you that the Jews have the Father, but they don't have the Son, uh-uh. But all these things they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him. They know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. What's a cloak? It's clothing. They can't cover their sin. Remember Jesus? Jesus is going to give us white garments, wedding garments. That's going to come cover our sins. That was washed white and clean in the blood of the Lamb. That's in the book of Revelation. <laughs> Verse 23. You won't get this preached in a demon nominational church. Jesus said, He that hateth me hateth my Father also. Do they hate Jesus? Well, they also hate God the Father. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, what works did Jesus do? He raised the dead. He healed the sick. He healed those that were disabled. He made the blind to see and the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. He cast out devils. Yeah, there was a couple of prophets that did a couple of those things, but they didn't do all of them. I think it was Elisha that raised somebody to back to life. And, and there was another one that had a guy that had leprosy that was cured. And Jesus cured lepers. You know, nobody did all the miracles that Jesus did. Jesus did them all. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my Father. But this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. If you go to a Pentecostal church and everything's about the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit isn't pointing to Christ, you're in the wrong place, people. Period. But when the Comforter has come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. All right, I've read this in a previous 
study, but I'm going to read it again. Revelation chapter 2, starting in verse 1. John is looking into the future. And he showed me a pure, well, the future for the saints. I mean, this is present for the Lord, but, you know. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manners, manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. I personally believe the tree of life is Christ, symbolic. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. Do you want his name in your forehead, or would you rather have the mark of the beast, 666, in your forehead, or in your right hand? Um, that's a tough choice, huh? And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light. Jesus is the light of the world, right? For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Now, is it just the book of Revelation or the entire Bible? I think it's the entire Bible, the book, right? And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not. For I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophet, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. And he saith unto me, Seal not, seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according, accordingly, according as his work shall be. Jesus says, I am Alpha and Omega. Alpha is the first letter of the Greek alphabet, and Omega is the last letter of the Greek alphabet. I don't see the Hebrew there, contrary to the Hebrew root liars. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. That's right. Christ was the beginning. Christ was the is going to be the end. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs. What did we read about dogs? Sodomites, right? For without are dogs and Harry Potter people, um, oh, I'm sorry, and saucers and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root. I am the root. And the offspring of David, and the bright and morning star. So Jesus is the root of David and the offspring of David. How can he be the root of David? Well, 
We're going to find out in John chapter 1. Christ created everything. He created the earth. He formed Adam out of the dust of the earth. Adam begat Seth, who went down the line. And King David was of the tribe of Judah, of which Christ in the flesh was of that tribe. So that's how he can say, I am the root, the root of the vine. The, I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Do you know that some of the modern Bibles, like the complete Jewish Bible and the NIV, Jesus says, I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Do you know that in Isaiah 14, the modern Bibles will delete the word Lucifer and insert the word morning star? Thus, they have the morning star falling from heaven to be cast into the hell, to be covered with worms, to be thrown into the pit of hell. And Jesus says he's the morning star. I think I'll stick with the King James Bible. It says... Lucifer, the light bearer, the angel of light, who's the prince of darkness, is going to hell in Isaiah 14. Yeah, that's why I don't trust Hebrew roots people. David Stern, a so-called Messianic Jew, followed the NIV translation and says the morning star is going into the pit of hell in Isaiah 14. I don't think so. And they tell you that's modern scholarship. Oh yeah, it's modern scholarship, all right. Verse 17. And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Yeah, yeah. They... they they, uh, the Hebrew roots people want you to think that Jesus, the morning star, fell from heaven in Isaiah 14. I've never heard not one Messianic Jew ever condemn the complete Jewish Bible by David Stern. Never. Not one. Do they know this? I don't see how they can miss it. Verse 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. He which testifieth thee think these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Let's go to John 1. How can Jesus be the root and the offspring of David? Simple. John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jehovah's Witnesses will take an A and put it right before, and the word was a God. So you got God and a God. So a God and a God is, let's see, God is one, and then a, a God is two. So they got two gods. And when you point that out, they'll say, no, 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 God's one. Oh, okay. Let's see, you've got God and a God and a God. That's two. No, 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 no. God's one. And in the Greek manuscripts, there's no way they get, and the word was a God. No, 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 no. It's not there. Even their interlinear Bible that, that where they show the Greek and everything will prove their translators added to the word of God. So they're going to be they're going to be, just like in Revelation that we just read, they're going to have God's plagues added to them when the time comes. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word 
was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. The heavens, the earth, the angels, Adam. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. You see, the Muslims, they don't believe this. Oh, they'll say, well, yeah, Jesus was a prophet. Of course, the Bible's wrong, so we can't believe anything he says, because the Bible's mistranslated. That's why God had to send a demon named who called himself Gabriel to give us the Quran. And, of course, the Jews don't believe this either, because they say, no, the New Testament, nope, there is no New Testament. We got the Torah, which their holy book is the Talmud, T-A-L-M-U-D, from Babylon, the Babylonian Talmud, Mystery Babylon the Great. In the beginning was a word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Wow. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness to the of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light, that was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. And the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Now, when you take a look at Genesis chapter 6, it says sons of God. In the Old Testament, sons of God referred to angels. After all, who was their father? God was. He created them. The Bible also records that Adam was called a son of God. And then we're, when we're born again of the Spirit, we're sons of God. That doesn't happen until the New Testament. And if you have any doubt that angels are the sons of God, read Job 38. Matter of fact, I have an entire playlist on the angels that sin, and you can go into extra, uh, detail in this study. And then there's people that'll tell you, they'll, they'll show you the New Testament, and they'll go back and explain the Old Testament. Now, you've got to use the Old Testament as the foundation for the New Testament. Okay? The New Testament's the roof and the walls. The Old Testament is the foundation, the flooring. You don't, you don't make a foundation out of the roof. You don't do that. Okay? But as many as received him, to him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. What's his name? Jesus. It's not Yeshua, people. You know, I, I, I wonder, are they trying to get people to not believe on his name? That's what sounds like what something the devil would do, doesn't it? Even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh. And the word was made flesh. God became flesh, people. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory and the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. 
John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. How can that be? How can, how can he have been, for he was before me? John was six months older than Jesus. Well, he was born before Christ was. So how could Christ be before him? Simple. Christ created the world. He existed before the earth was created. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses. That's the first dispensation. The dispensation. Dispensation comes from a word, the same root word that means to dispense, to give. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. That's the next dispensation, the dispensation of grace. See, I'm dispensational. I believe in the two dispensations, dispensation of law and the dispensation of grace. I don't believe in seven dispensations as put out by that charlatan Schofield that abandoned his wife and children and swindled his mother-in-law out of her life saving, then supposedly got saved in prison, put out a Bible, sold hundreds of thousands of copies, became very rich, never repaid a penny to his mother-in-law when he swindled her out of her life savings and left his wife and children destitute and never gave a penny's support to his own children per both his daughter's testimony. The Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall everything be established. He was a charlatan. And yet people will believe his dispensational theology. They'll believe his pre-trib rapture theology. Jesus warned about wolves in sheep's clothing. Schofield called himself doctor. He never went to any Bible college. At least I went to Bible college six years. They, they teach Schofield as if it's they read his notes and give it the same weight as the scriptures. I don't think so. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared them. Him. He hath declared him. Verse 19. And this is the record of John. When the Jews sent priests, Jewish priests, not Catholic, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. I asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? You know, Elijah, that's the Greek rendering. And he saith, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. They said unto him, Who art thou, that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? Now, Jesus, there was a time when they asked about, uh, you know, uh, the disciples asked him, Oh, let's take a look. Now, I did an entire Bible study on Elijah, E-L-I-J-A-H, about an hour and 45 minutes long covers pretty much everything. All right, Matthew 17, 10. And his disciples asked him, Jesus, and his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elias must come first? Elijah. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall come first and restore all things. See, one of the two witnesses in Revelation is going to be Elijah. But I say unto you that Elias is come already, and they knew him they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise also the Son of Man, 
suffer of them. See, John, Jesus said he compared, he compared John, well, let's take a look. He was comparing John as coming in the, well, let's read verse 13. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. See, John the Baptist, they asked him, are you Elijah? He said, no. Nope, I'm not. And obviously John the Baptist knew who he was. But here, Jesus is saying, John came in the spirit of Elijah. Okay, because there's two comings. You know, the first time Christ came as a lamb, as a sacrifice for the sins of the world. The next time he comes, he's coming as the lion of the tribe of Judah. And that's when, so John the Baptist came the first time preaching repentance. Second time, Elijah's going to come probably preaching the same thing. But he's going to come in judgment. There's a big difference. All right, back to John chapter 1. Oh, uh, let's see. Verse, well, let's go back to 19. And this is the record of John. John 1, 19. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he saith, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he, and he answered, No. Then said they unto him, Who art thou that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Esaias. And they which were sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him and said unto him, Why baptizest thou then, if thou be not that Christ, nor Elias, neither that prophet? John answered them, saying, I baptize you with water, but there standeth one among you whom ye know not. He it is who cometh after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latch it, I am not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Beth Abara, beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. For he was before me. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Wherefore am I come baptizing? with water. See, John was the forerunner. He was to baptize or cleanse the flesh. But Christ, through belief in him, would send the Holy Spirit, who would baptize us and cleanse our spirit. And John bare record saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending, and remain on him, the same as he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. Again, the next day after John stood and two of his disciples and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, 
Behold, the Lamb of God. All right, well, that's the end of part four of the figs. Uh, Israel's Israel, which is the vineyard of God. The next part, I'm going to go to the New Testament and do the mystery of the cursing of the fig tree. Why did Jesus curse the fig tree? What did the fig tree do? Nothing. That's why he cursed it. It did nothing. All right, well, all blessings, praise, glory.